Hi, this is Christophe speaking. First of all, I hope you're all home and healthy, of course. As you probably know, all classes are cancelled and will be replaced by some online uh, lectures in one uh, shape or form. In our case, we'll be making a ton of YouTube videos for you. Welcome to the new normal, I guess. So, today, today I'll be talking about the movies exercise. More specifically, what I came up with uh, when it came to data collection um, for the movies exercise. So, where does this all fit in within the uh, general course outline? Well, it's a good idea to watch this about two weeks after submitting uh, your own uh, proposal for data collection, which is something that you did last week. Um, and it's obviously meant for students who are actually working on a movies exercise. Okay, so what is our goal here? Well, threefold. First of all, I will present you one possible solution for the exercise. Again, to be clear, this is just a solution that I came up with. It's not a perfect solution. Maybe you even have a better solution or a more valid um, data collection protocol, which is fine. So you can always use your own files that you collected if you want to. But if you don't want to and you want to work on the data sets I collected, uh, you can do that as well. Don't worry, this has no impact whatsoever on your uh, grade for this course. The second goal is that besides presenting you a final solution, I will also reflect on some issues of validity, reliability, and a couple of troubles I encountered during data collection. For more detail on that, just check the protocol in the logbook on uh, Ufora. And third and finally, I will very shortly present you the data sets I finally collected, what kind of variables are in the data sets, etc. Okay, so first of all, you had to translate the problem statement or this little narrative, this little uh, funny story uh, I made up uh, into a client question. So what is the exercise about? What do we want to know? Well, is there a discrepancy in how the average moviegoer and a professional critic rate popular versus less popular movies? And second question basically, has this discrepancy been increasing over the last 10 years? This is what we want to know, right? Now, if you translate this into something that can be researched by, let's say, a data uh, analyst, you get something like this. So the first research question talks about a relationship. So it's a typical statistical uh, concept here. So what is the relationship between A, the revenue of a movie? And you can see that the revenue of a movie is indicated in red because this is one of the concepts that we need to um, operationalize uh, in our protocol. So again, what is the re relationship between A, the revenue of a movie and B, the difference in rating between the regular moviegoer and a professional critic. So you can see that both of these variables seem to be uh, interval variables, so a score between 1 and 100, for example, when it comes to a rating of a movie. So in the end, we expect that at least some kind of scatter plot, right? Uh, and a trend line in said scatter plot between the revenue of a movie and how different the average Joe, let's say, and a professional critic uh, rates um, uh, rates those movies. And research question two, does this relationship change over time for movies released during the past 10 years? Okay. Now, this is what you started out with. So I gave you four scripts on REPL. And they're also available on Ufora. And in these scripts, you can by using these scripts, you can scrape four different platforms. So for example, Box Office Mojo here. So again, I just 
You could access the scraper's chest in the problem statement here, which is a document you had at the beginning of the exercise. Okay, so if I run this, So when the script of the box office mojo scraper actually runs, you can see I provided you with some menu uh, options. So I want to scrape the box office from, you just had to give in a year, so from 2010, and let's just scrape two years until 2011. And you have a progress bar. Now it will scrape the tables from the box office mojo website. Okay, done. So now I ask you, okay, do you want to keep only a subset of the data, yes or no? So Y for yes, and I only want to keep, let's say, a top 100 of each and every year. And there you go, done. And now you can see that in the REPL environment, you have a new CSV file box of his mojo. You can copy the output here, let's say, for example, in Notepad. There you go. Let's just save it as example um, box office uh, mojo 2 doesn't matter how you call it obviously there you go and you can open this in excel just by going to data from text now you can see here example box office mojo 2 this is something that Frederick already explained to you that you need to select the UTF-8 Unicode encoding with the limited uh, separator, namely the comma, as you can see here. The comma as a separator, there you go. Seems to work. Okay, great. You can delete this. So this is what the scraper just scraped. As you can see here, and this was a hint to you guys, the last column contains an RL number. We will talk about these RL numbers or IDs later on. But you can see that, so the top 100 more, most popular movies of 2010 are in here, and the top 100 of 2011 as well. There you go, so we have a total of 201 rows, which is something that we uh, would expect. So now we have a ranking of movies. So this is basically already our uh, x-axis right so we want to place these movies on an x-axis and we want to know whether avatar is rated very differently um, by the average joe versus the professional critics and whether this uh, discrepancy in rating is different or greater than let's say the rating of black swan right which is not that a popular movie um, number 80 of 2010. So okay, so now we have, or we know how to collect data on what we want to plot on our x-axis, namely the, um, the, the revenue of a movie and their ranking, basically. It's not so much that the revenue or the growth as such is that important. You could operationalize it as that, like that, um, but you could also just use a ranking, right? Which is a different way of looking at it okay great so you also had a imdb scraper a metacritic and a rotten tomato scraper there you go this this is the example of the imdb scraper so as an input it requires you to give it tt numbers and then if you just run it, I won't do it because you can test it if you if you want it uh, for yourself. Um, and it will give you all the ratings by sociodemographic group, by age, by gender of all the movies uh, indicated by the TT number. Okay. Now, there we go. So the box of his mojo scraper, IMDb, Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes. And each of these scrapers take in um, the ID of a movie for a given platform as their input. If you know the ID, if you know the part of the URL that basically refers to a specific movie, 
in Metacritic, it's basically the title or something similar to the title, Rotten Tomatoes, um, the same, and IMDb, the TT number. There are two questions here. Question one is, which platforms do we want to scrape? Do we want information from all platforms here or just a subset? And the second question is, even if we know what kind of plot platforms we want to scrape, how can we collect in an automatic fashion the IDs of the movie that we want the ratings of? Mm -hmm. So we already had the revenue. Now we want to collect data on what the average Joe thinks about a specific movie and also the professional critics. But in order to do that, we need to fetch some IDs in an automatic fashion. Okay, how can we do that? There are a couple of possible strategies here. So the first strategy is that perhaps all info is just available on a single platform. If that's the case, then we just need to scrape one platform. Unfortunately, there's not really consistently a list of the revenue of a movie together with the rating of the average moviegoer and the professional critic on one single platform. So it's not as if we can just scrape a certain page on IMDb that contains all the information that we need. We don't need ranking of how much a movie made in a particular year and their uh, corresponding ratings. No, it's not the case. Okay, so we need to scrape multiple platforms. Strategy number two, maybe we could exploit the URL structure. This is something that is typical of web scraping because if you can predict the URL structure of a certain page, well, then you can build a scraper that exploits the predictability of the URL structure. So for example, some of these platforms have rather predictable URL structures. So if I go to Metacritic, for example, and I go to a random movie, let's say the platform, As you can see here, I can predict that the URL of the platform is basically just metacritic.com slash movie slash the platform, right? So I could probably predict that the page with all the scores on the movie Parasite is called metacritic.com slash, slash movie slash parasite. I hope that's the case. I'm not really sure. Yeah, there you go. So there is some predictability there. So maybe this is our final solution. Maybe we should just take the titles that the Box Office Mojo scraper gave us, take these titles and fill them just in into the URL structure. And this is a very common technique in web scraping. Unfortunately, this doesn't work all the time. So let's, for example, go again to Box Office Mojo and go to the yearly, there you go. So in 2018, there was a remake. I think there was, yes, there was a remake of Halloween, the Halloween movie. We had a couple of remakes. The first movie is obviously uh, the best version, but anyway. So, okay, so imagine that we want to obtain the uh, Metacritic score of Halloween. Well, let's just let's just type in Halloween then here, and as you can see, the Metacritic page will predict that we want to access the 2007 version of Halloween, which is not correct. So these URL structures are not always 100% predictable, especially when it comes to remakes or uh, titles that are very common, and even then sometimes. Websites opt for a different ID, a slightly different title, so that you get a lot of errors. So this is not a reliable method to obtain the Metacritic or user score on um, on this platform. And IMDb, of course, is characterized by these TT numbers. And this is something that we can't guess at all, right? So we need to scrape that if you want to scrape IMDb. And the same goes for Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, so this is not a solution, but what about a third strategy? Is there a link between the platform, an inherent link, that we could exploit? And yes, there is one, and I will explain that to you 
uh, later on. And the link is between Box Office Mojo, IMDb, and Metacritic. So I can jump from, from one Box Office Mojo table to the specific IMDb movie page of a single movie and also to its corresponding Metacritic page without any error or any guesswork. The second challenge refers to the fact that we can't just scrape the top five, let's say, or the top 10 of each and every year between 2010 and 2019. Remember the last 10 years, this is also the uh, changing trend that we want to detect over the years. We can't just scrape the top 10 because the top 10 movies are still very popular. We want some variability in the crosses so that we can make a distinction even gradually, that some movies are very popular and some less so. But at the same time though, we can scrape the entire box office or all movies that were released in the US, for example. Because if we do that, well, then the movies who are very low in ranking, so we're just viewed by a couple of thousand, let's say, uh, cinema goers, will have a very low sample of ratings on IMDb and similarly will only be reviewed by a couple or even none of the professional critics. And so low sample sizes or even just missing data and no sample um, will give us less reliable results when it comes to our estimation what the average Joe or the, and or the professional critic thinks about a movie. So we need to strike a middle ground here. Let's say that we want to scrape the top 100 and I'll check this just manually so I I checked for a couple of years that the top, the, the 100 movie in ranking had a considerable amount of votes on IMDb and also is still reviewed by a considerable amount of critics on Metacritic. Again, taking the top 100, there's, it's not like it's a scientific way of selecting a sample. You could also easily just scrape the top 50, which is also legitimate. Um, the, the 50 movie in ranking is obviously less popular than uh, the first movie in ranking. Okay, challenge number three relates to the validity of a measure. So the first question is, we want to know what the average moviegoer thinks about a movie. Of course, people who rate movies on IMDb are not really, or Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes, are not really considered the average moviegoer. They tend to be male and between around 30 and 45 years old. So there is a bias in our sample. This is a typical online bias, which is present in most research um, that uh, takes an online sample. But we could correct for that, for example, by collecting IMDb data. Because IMDb breaks down all ratings along sociodemographic groups, such, such as age, gender, and it also gives us even the ratings of the US versus uh, non-US voters. Then second problem or challenge, what about professional critic? How will we operationalize that? Well, Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes have a very different strategy to defining who a professional critic is. Metacritic has a very strict uh, barrier. It only considers about 60-ish or 70-ish professional critics around the globe, mostly from the US and the UK. Rotten Tomatoes, on the other hand, has a very, you know, relaxed barrier. In the sense that if I tomorrow decide to start up a blog and write about movies, I can just ask Rotten Tomatoes to include me in their sample of professional critics. And that's about it. I will be considered a professional critic. So in this sense, Metacritic provides a more valid estimate of what a professional critic thinks because it has a more limited sample. These, this is really, or these are really the, let's say the elite critics or they represent the uh, elitist critic. Okay, so this means that IMDb and Metacritic are our preferred platforms to obtain information on the average moviegoer one and on a professional critic two. And then challenge number three is the lack of comparability between some platforms. And again, IMDb and Metacritic are the ideal candidates when you um, take a look at this challenge. So Rotten Tomatoes gives a movie a fresh or a rotten score. 
and it transforms that into a somewhat mysterious weighted percentage score. While IMDb and Metacritic, they basically just represent scores between um, 1 or 0 to 10. I think that IMDb or that IMDb and Metacritic have a different low low bar. That's one platform has a low bar of a 0 out of 10 and the other a 0 out of 100. I'm not really sure. You have to check the protocol for that. But they're pretty comparable. Even if that's the case, we can just transform the scores um, between these platforms so that they are comparable. So again, IMDb and Metacritic are more comparable than Rotten Tomatoes and any other platform. And again, are uh, they are our preferred platforms to scrape. So, okay. Now I will present to you what I found or what my final solution is. And I will present to you what I call the master script. So it's a script that I use to collect all the data in one go without going from scraper to scraper. And I already gave you the essential building blocks for building the master script at the start of the exercise. So I gave you the IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic scraper. I don't use the Rotten Tomatoes scraper. I only scrape Box Office Mojo, IMDb, and Metacritic. And Rotten Tomatoes, I just made for you guys. If someone wants to scrape Rotten Tomatoes for their protocol, you can do that. So I gave you all access to the essential building blocks. And a master script simply combines these essential building blocks in one script, in one go but incorporates two additional functionalities or two additional little scripts that you also uh, had access to um, from two weeks ago because someone emailed me and asked me to provide them with these additional functionalities and they gave me a rationale what the script should do um, and why they need it. And this is why I released it on Euphora. So basically you had all the scripts in the total, I think six scripts to build let's say the master script and to come to the same solution uh, as I did. Okay. So what does a script actually do? I will break it down for you. So the first thing that it does, it scrapes for each and, and every year that you input it into the little menu I made in the script, the box office mojo. There you go. Uh, table right here containing, as you know, the ranking and the grosses of the movies for every year. And I scraped this for the last 10 years. Okay. Now the challenge here is how can I obtain IMDb and Metacritic ratings? Because we can't just exploit the URL structure. I already told you that. Well, what I did is I accessed the URL of the individual movie pages on Box Office Mojo. You can see that you can just click on them, but you can also click here on inspect right and then click on an element here using this little tool there you go and you can see that we have an rl number right an rl id which is a variable from movie to movie the rest of the link is basically always the same release slash and then the id of the movie on box office mojo okay and this is again exactly what I already gave to you, right? This is what the box of his mojo scraper also scraped the link to the movie page, specific movie page on box of his mojo. So this was a hint to you guys that maybe you need to access this page, this kind of page. Um, so for example, again, how to train your dragon here. If you take the RL number and copy it, and I go to the Avengers movie for a while and I replace your RL number. There you go. Then you have the movie page of how to train your dragon. Okay, so this is the first thing I did, or actually the second thing. So I scraped the box office mojo pages, and then step number two, I accessed the individual individual movie pages. Okay, next step is that I looked for a link to another platform, which is always and reliably on the page. And I did find that, as you can see here, the IMDB Pro, there's an IMDB Pro, um, little table here which contains as you can see links containing a TT number and this is exactly what you needed as well to feed 
uh, to feed it to your uh, IMDb scraper. So if you feed it this as an input to the IMDb scraper, then you got the ratings of the Avengers Endgame movie from the average movie, uh, average uh, Joe. Sorry. Now, if you click on the link, it will give you a page of IMDb Pro. And this is not what we want because we don't have a subscription on IMDb Pro, but it doesn't matter, right? Because we need the TT number. If you know the TT number, which is just shared on all IMDb platforms, then we can just predict perfectly without any trouble what the movie page will be of. There you go, the Avengers Endgame movie. So we can travel from Box Office Mojo to IMDb. And this is basically the third step. Okay, so now that we, that we have that, we still need to scrape the um, movie ratings by social demographic group. Well, no problem because if we just put ratings at the end of the URL on IMDb, then you get the social demographic breakdown of um, the ratings of a specific movie. And this is exactly what the IMDb scraper actually scrapes. This is the page where it does all um, the work. Okay, so now I can, or I did obtain the IMDb ratings. Now I still need a link to another platform. Now look what I found over here. If you click on a Metascore link here, then you can see that there's a link available to metacritic.com. And this is just scrapable, right? I can just access this page. I can predict it because I have the TT number right here. And if I put critic reviews after the uh, standard link, then I go to the Metacritic Movies page on IMDb. And you can see right over here that there's a link containing the ID of the Metacritic movie page of Avengers Endgame. So this is exactly the ID that you needed to feed your Metacritic scraper, right? Okay, so if we access this URL, we can just access this with our scraper. We can go to Metacritic. Okay, so now we traveled from Box Office Mojo to IMDb to Metacritic, exactly what we want, and we can scrape the uh, meta score, but I don't want to scrape just that. I want to scrape each and every individual movie review. And we could predict that simply if you click on the meta score itself. You can see that if you put at the end critic reviews, if you have your ID and then critic reviews, then you get this page. And this is again the page where the Metacritic script does its work. So it scrapes all the scores and all the corresponding outlets. So why do I want to scrape the, the specific outlets? Well, it's because I want to have my own non-biased um, aggregated score of a particular movie. Because this score, the Metacritic score, is determined by an algorithm and they put some higher and lower weight on some outlets to obtain this final score. And it's unclear to us how that algorithm looks like, how they get to that score 78. And for this reason, we want an unbiased estimate and we just, for example, want a median score, or obtain a median score of uh, all outlets. Moreover, since we scraped the US box office, as you can see here, the domestic US box office, we also want to exclude outlets potentially that are not from the US. So the Wall Street Journal, yeah, we want some information on that. But for example, let's take um, a UK outlet. Can't really find one immediately, although it's probably there. Anyway, you want to exclude uh, oh, the Guardian, for example. We want to exclude scores from the Guardian, which is a UK outlet. And since that the IMDb uh, social demographic breakdown also provides you scores of US voters. We can just compare the US box office and see um, how US critics and US audiences rate those movies because there's a, of course a cultural difference in how we uh, view, consume and appreciate certain movies. So this is why I want to keep that constant. I want to look at Americans basically. 
And so this is the final step of the master script. It accesses the Metacritic web page, or critics page, and it scrapes all the reviews. Okay, so this is what the script basically does. Again, this is just a repetition of what I just said, all the steps, all the breakdowns. And you can see that the orange E boxes is what you already had at the beginning of the uh, exercise. You could already uh, do that in week uh, one or two, and when, when was it? Um, but, uh, but the green boxes are the additional scripts. And there was one student who asked me to uh, obtain these additional scripts and provided me with a rationale why do I need these scripts and what should uh, they be able to do and this is also something that I provided to you on Euphoria. So basically you had access, you had the scripts of all these little boxes. It's putting them together and seeing how they fit which is of course a challenge here. So again the unlockable scripts, these two little uh, green scripts here indicated in green from box office mojo to imdb and from imdb to metacritic these steps are also available on uh, euphora it's the also the only scraping strategy that answer uh, that makes sure that we obtain the individual movie ratings of a limited set of professional critics as i already told you and like Rotten tomatoes we can also break it down according to to socio demographic groups as i mentioned so we can look at the U.S. market, the U.S. voters, and the U.S. critics. And it provides us with a clear one-on-one -on -one link between the movie mentioned on Box of His Mojo and the user and professional critic rating. And this is, I guess, but you can tell me otherwise on the exam. <laughs> That's no problem. This is the only strategy that um, makes sure that we, um, we comply to all these criteria. So in my opinion, it's a pretty strong, reliable and valid way of scraping um, the ratings and solving the data collection phase. The master script is available on REPL. As always, I unlocked it now, so you can scrape the entire um, box of his mojo, IMDb, Metacritic, uh, movies, movie ratings in one go. And the most difficult thing or the most challenging thing I encountered in scraping the movies is that the websites didn't want to be uh, scraped. A lot of websites have some bot detection mechanism in place. So websites don't want you to scrape their data because for one thing, if you scrape a lot of data, it puts a heavy load on their servers and you could even crash a website if you, um, if you do a lot of requests uh, to one host. And the second issue why they don't want to be scraped is that they consider it stealing their data or that is their opinion anyway which is kind of weird because metacritic is an aggregator in and of itself but okay especially box of his mojo and metacritic didn't want to be scraped so there are a couple of little tricks i use to avoid or circumvent bot detection the first thing is that i set the appropriate headers so it seems as i was a real user so whenever that you're using your browser and your browsing to a website then you send headers to uh, the host to the website to the server and the headers are basically just a way of communicating with the website for example you communicate that you are on a mobile version of a web browser so the website should display its mobile uh, page and not the normal page um, it also tells the website what kind of browser that you're using chrome firefox etc that you allow cookies or not, etc. And if you scrape without setting those headers, you just leave those empty. And this is a, a real um, giveaway to the website that you're doing some automatic uh, data collection. So I send, I set up appropriate headers in my script, um, which is a, a first trick to uh, seem as if I'm a real user. A second and very common thing in web scraping uh, that I did is I set a random pause between the URLs I scraped. So whenever I accessed a page on IMDb, I waited for, let's say, 15 to 30 seconds, and then I scraped another one. And I set this, ran this pause randomly so it doesn't seem as if I'm exactly waiting 15 seconds between each link, because otherwise this is also a giveaway to the website that I'm uh, an, uh, an, a bot, basically using a bot, because it can predict perfectly whenever I'm accessing a page. The second, and this is basically 
um, something similar to the second um, trick is that I did set an additional random pause between a random batch of URLs. So next to the pause between one URL, I also defined a random batch of, let's say, between 20 and 40 pages, again, randomly. And whenever this batch uh, is scraped, I pause for a somewhat longer time, let's say two to three minutes. Again, to seem as if I'm randomly at random times accessing uh, the platform. A fourth trick is that whenever that it did detect me as a bot, I asked the script for sleep for five minutes. So if an error occurs, if my script says, okay, they kick you out, you can't access the page, I'll sleep for five minutes. And then I started the loop again. And I tried to access the page again and so on and so on. But if it kicks me out three times in a row, so after waiting five minutes, I try again, again an error, I try again, again an error, I try again. If it then doesn't work, I just break the script because otherwise uh, I will um, have the risk of basically getting stuck in an error loop for uh, infinity. And the fifth trick is that I sleep for 30 minutes after the script finishes um, a particular year. So I first begin with scraping the results of the 2001 box office and their corresponding IMDb and Metacritic ratings, then a 2011, then a 2012, etc. And this means that each and every platform, um, I give it a, a little pause, right? So I scrape 100 pages of IMDb and then I go to Metacritic and I only return to IMDb after scraping all Metacritic pages, sleeping for 30 minutes, scraping the box office mojo page uh, or table, uh, etc. So that again, um, the odds that I'm being detected as a bot is lower because I, I put in uh, a natural pause, let's say, uh, between the platforms. And so this is how it looks when I scraped it uh, using my IDE on my um, on my uh, own computer. So I started off with the 2011 data, scrapes your Russell IMDb, then to uh, Metacritic, and then it actually uh, scrapes the user ratings on IMDb first and then Metacritic. And then it, and then it continues with the 2012 box office data. And this is what the end result is. So you have eight data sets, each containing um, their uh, some variables. And you can see in the protocol, question 16, uh, what these variables are and what they mean. So for example, if I go to the Metacritic reviews here, you can see that I included the URL. This is for example, the Avatar movie, as you can see clearly, includes a link and it has contains the general score as calculated by the algorithm of a Metacritic and it contains each and every outlet and the score that the outlet gave to the uh, specific movie. The only data set that it didn't collect automatically is this one. This one is something I just made manually by myself and it's an identification of each and every outlet as being from the US, online, from the UK, or from somewhere else, but it's only these three categories. So for example, uh, Screen International is a UK outlet. This is something that I might want to filter out of these uh, reviews uh, because I want to focus on the US critics, right? Which I already stated. In total, you have uh, around 37,000 uh, reviews here. And similarly, you have the reviews of IMDb and um, the box of his mojo, a top 100 of the last 10 years. So you have 1,001 rows in the Metacritic uh, um, CSV file, where each line is one, um, corresponds to one movie in one particular year. Okay, so just to recap, very, very, very brief. All the scripts and the necessary input files are available on Euphora, or you could access them online, but please remember, copy paste the scripts into your own REPL environment, as well as the input files and the .tumble file. The .tumble file defines the uh, packages that the script needs and also the version of those packages. Um, 
So you can see all the scripts here. You can see the six scripts you unlocked and you started with. And the final solution, the master script, combines all these previous six scripts into one, into one general script. And so you, I didn't need to do anything to collect all the data after I obviously coded the scraper, the web scraper. I just uh, started the script. I um, did ask for, this is one thing you have to do, all the box office results between 2010 and 2019. And then I just went to sleep. I, I started it in the evening. And then I, um, you know, then around 9 a.m. it take or 10 a.m. it takes around 10 hours because of the the large amount of random sleeps I uh, incorporated into the script to avoid bot detection because of these uh, long pauses. Um, the script takes about 10 hours to run, but after said 10 hours, I have all the results. I have all the uh, data sets that I need. Uh, from IMDb, Box Office Mojo, and Metacritic. So that's basically it. So no, you don't need to know how to code these scripts, right? It's just a basic understanding of what the script basically does and their, their, um, the logic, and this is really important, the logic of um, finding a reliable link from one web page to the other, that this is a important a strategy when doing web scraping, that you understand the basic ID behind that, that you can scrape uh, URLs that contain that are contained in a page and that you can jump from page to page from that, that is important. Um, but you don't need to know, uh, of course, how to uh, write uh, the master script uh, at all. You don't need to know how to uh, code that in Python. The protocol and the logbook and the data sets are all available on Euphora right now, or they should be. If that's not the case, email me, please. And you need to be able to reflect on the solution critically and compare them with your own solution. So do not learn the protocol or the logbook by heart. That's not the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is, is, is that you reflect on a specific uh, problem statement um, and that you find your own solution um, and compare it uh, if you have to, if you didn't reach the same solution as I uh, did, that you compare it with my solution. And that's it, right? So please do not learn these by heart. Okay, so now what? So the question in the data wrangling phase is how you get from this, so you have all your eight data sets, how you get from this to a data set um, that would allow you to answer the research questions here, right? And so this data wrangling phase is an intermediate phase between the data collection and actually doing the analysis to, to answer the research questions. And the deadline of this data wrangling phase, so basically you need to take these eight CSVs and combine them, join them in some way, uh, doing some aggregating, grouping, for example, calculating a median of the Metacritic reviews for each uh, movie, for example. This is something you have to do and it's something uh, that also Frederick talked about or talks about uh, in uh, his uh, YouTube lectures. So check the tutorials that are available in Data Wrangling on YouTube um, in any way. Okay, so that's about it. So remember, if you have any questions, um, you can email me, uh, obviously. Uh, and I wish you all a very nice day. Bye now.